Hello, lovely people. Welcome back for another video. Today we're discussing the DIKW pyramid, information literacy, and how those relate to critical thinking. So I want to start off with a question. When we look at the DIKW pyramid that we examined in a previous video, how do we actually move from one level to the other? Or phrased differently, if you were tasked by turning some piece of data, a, a spreadsheet of sales data for your business into information. What words would you use to describe what it is you're doing? Would you say something like, I need to look at the data uh, for evidence that I can draw some conclusions from. I need to be able to explain it to my coworkers or my boss and that will help me. I need to look at it from different angles, analyze it piece by piece and then see how those pieces relate to each other. Those are critical thinking strategies. Your, your text uh, mentions six, and they're listed here. To infer to, is to draw conclusions from evidence, analyze, break into parts and relationships, evaluate, examine based on criteria, interpret is to comprehend meaning, explain is to make clear, and to synthesize is to combine separates to form a concept or an idea. And many times when we do critical thinking, uh, we apply multiple or all of these. It's not necessarily I'm going to infer something and that's all I need to do to solve the problem quite often. You might break something into parts and see how they relate and then uh, form them back together uh, to see what new ideas or concepts come of your new understanding. And that's critical thinking. But have you ever stopped and asked yourself, well, what does critical thinking actually mean? Have you ever tried to define it in your own words? We hear all the time that employers are looking for employees who can think critically and solve complex problems. It's a, it's a highly desired skill in today's workforce. And it's something that we're going to be doing throughout this semester and you'll be doing throughout your, your professional careers. But what does it actually mean? Your text has a definition, and I want to highlight some things from it that I think are the, the really key points. The first two are, are very closely linked. Distinguishing between assumption and fact, and suspending personal opinion and bias. This is tough. If you think about work, you've got opinions about work. Maybe you love your job, maybe you hate your job. Maybe you could care less. But those personal opinions are going to influence the way that you think about a problem that you're trying to solve at work. And being able to suspend those personal opinions and dig for facts is a key component to critical thinking. Thirdly, multiple perspectives and adequate depth. Critical thinking is not about finding the first solution that seems to work and going with it. Sometimes you get lucky, your gut is right. But that's not what critical thinking is really all about. Critical thinking is, well, what are all of my possible alternatives? What are the different perspectives that I need to uh, look at this problem through? What are the different lenses that I need to look at this problem through? And be sure that you dig down as far as necessary to actually solve the problem. My question to you, how do you actually use these, whether it's at home, at school, or at work? You do these all the time. We might not necessarily put a label on them, but we think critically often. The sales data example from earlier, your boss asks you, take a look at this spreadsheet of sales data and come back to me tomorrow with a report on what it means. Well, what are you going to do? You're going to look for relationships in that data. You're going to look for evidence that points to some conclusion in that data. You're going to try to break it apart into the individual pieces and see how they relate. Put it all back together to form a concept of what it actually means to your business. And that's critical thinking.